In 1184, France, Balian, a blacksmith, is haunted by his wife's recent suicide after the death of their unborn child. A crusader passing through the village introduces himself as Balian's father, Baron Godfrey of Ibelin, and asks him to return with him to the Holy Land, but Balian declines. The town priest, Balian's half-brother, reveals that he ordered Balian's wife's body beheaded before burial. Upon discovering that the priest also stole his wife's crucifix, Balian kills him. Balian joins his father, hoping to gain forgiveness and redemption for himself and his wife in Jerusalem. They are confronted by soldiers sent to arrest Balian and Godfrey is struck by an arrow. Reaching Messina, they have a contentious encounter with Guy de Lusignan, a prospective future king of Jerusalem. Godfrey knights Balian, names him the new Baron of Ibelin, and orders him to serve the King of Jerusalem and protect the helpless, before succumbing to the arrow wound. Balian's ship runs aground in a storm, leaving him the lone survivor. Balian is confronted by a Muslim cavalier, who attacks him for his horse. Balian slays the man, but spares his servant, who tells him that this mercy will gain him fame and respect among the Saracens. Balian becomes acquainted with Jerusalem's political arena, the leper king Baldwin IV, Tiberius, the marshal of Jerusalem, the king's sister, Princess Sibylla, Guy's wife and mother, to a boy from an earlier marriage. Guy supports the brutal, anti-Muslim Knights Templar and intends to break the fragile truce between the king and the Muslim Sultan Saladin. Balian travels to his inherited estate at Ibelin, where the people struggle from lack of water. Balian works alongside the residents, using his engineering knowledge to irrigate the land, earning him their love and respect. Sibylla visits him and they become lovers. In 1185, Guy and his ally, the cruel Reynald of Chitillon, attack a Saracen caravan, and Saladin advances on Reynald's castle Carrick in retaliation. At the king's request, Balian defends the villagers, despite being overwhelmingly outnumbered. Captured, Balian encounters the servant he freed, learning he is actually Saladin's chancellor Imad ad-Din. Imad ad-Din releases Balian in repayment for his earlier mercy. Saladin and Baldwin negotiate a truce between their massive armies, a Muslim retreat in return for Reynald's punishment. A weakened Baldwin asks Balian to marry Sibylla and take control of the army, but Balian refuses, because it will require the execution of Guy and the Templars. Baldwin dies, and is succeeded by Sibylla's son, now Baldwin v. Sibylla, as regent, intends to maintain peace with Saladin, but her son also develops leprosy. Devastated, Sibylla makes the heartrending decision to end her son's life by poisoning him while he sleeps in her arms. She hands the crown to Guy and withdraws. Guy releases Reynald, who murders Saladin's sister. Guy declares war on the Saracens in 1187 and attempts to assassinate Balian, who barely survives. Guy marches to war, despite Balian's advice to remain near Jerusalem's water sources. The Saracens annihilate the tired and dehydrated crusaders in the ensuing desert battle. Saladin takes Guy captive, executes Reynald, and marches on Jerusalem. Tiberius leaves for Cyprus, but Balian remains to protect the people, knighting every fighting man to inspire them. After a three-day siege, a frustrated Saladin parleys with Balian. When Balian reaffirms that he will destroy Jerusalem if Saladin does not accept his terms, Saladin agrees to allow the Christians to leave safely. They ponder if it would be better if the city were destroyed, leaving nothing left to fight over. In the city, Balian is confronted by the humiliated Guy, and defeats him in a sword fight. He spares Guy's life, telling him to rise a knight as if he never were. Balian finds Sibylla, who has renounced her claim as queen, and they return to France. Afterwards, English knights en route to the Third Crusade meets Balian, the famed defender of Jerusalem. Bailon tells Richard that he is merely a blacksmith. 
Balian and Sibylla pass by his wife's grave as they ride toward the unknown. An epilogue notes that, nearly a thousand years later, peace in the kingdom of heaven still remains elusive.